five feet long Mighty immense but not too strong You'll be high but not for long If you the Viper. All right, welcome back, Vipers. It's time for the new Viper Hour here on 420radio.org. I'm your host, Radical Russ Belville, and we're continuing our spring and summer look at the movies from the Reefer Jazz era that warned us of the dastardly things that would happen if we got involved with the Reefers, the Muggles, the Jive, the Tea. And tonight's no different. For tonight's show, we're going all the way to 1949. One of the latest movies we've got in the collection. For She Should Have Said No. No, Just Say No goes back to even before Nancy Reagan, apparently. Let's see if we can get that screen ready for you. Sorry for the delay. This is the city of Los Angeles, one of the fastest growing communities in the United States today. A city that still reflects the charm and customs of its native past. A city of culture, of advanced liberal education that keeps abreast of each new generation. A city of progress and tremendous engineering accomplishments. Los Angeles, city of the angels. But like any other city, it has its back alleys, its world of saints and sinners, and the half world of dark shadows some of them dwell in. The darkest of these shadows is marijuana. In every large city, there are men like Captain Hayes, chief of the narcotic division. His job is to combat and control this evil menace. His fight, a 24-hour one. His weapons, simple but effective, patience and intelligence. Every case history tells the same story, a story that's a tragic pattern of men and women's lives. Cause, marijuana. This harmless-looking cigarette is cloaked marijuana. with many innocent disguises. But light the match, inhale the smoke, and it becomes an invitation to your own murder. This killer murder. and the man who sells it has no respect for anybody. His victims are any lost soul. It matters not to whom the soul belongs. The seller's method of operation, simple. Keep the mind from thinking. The mind thinks the world becomes a real thing with troubles and problems without the answers. But he has the answer, escape. Sell the dreams people want to dream. Keep them from waking up. Because once they do, you're out of business. Of course, the rich can afford to pay more for their dreams. It's a profitable game. And when boredom sets in, heroin, cocaine, opium is always the next step at higher prices. If you'll live that long, this man has no pride to lay his hand on an extra dollar. First. He'll set this killer loose on anyone. Even your kids who go to high school. You may even know him. His name is Marky. Change five pennies for a nickel pop. Be right back, baby. Hiya, Marky. Shut up, you crazy kid. How many times have I told you not to mention my name? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Huh, you're getting good taste. Wish I was young again. It's gonna cost you five bucks tonight. Five bucks? That's right. Weekend special. Free for five, just for you. 
but five dollars, that's Three all I get. Five. So tell your old man to double your allowance next week. Oh, no. Come on, dig. You want it or not? I haven't got all night. Okay, okay. Have fun. That's how it starts. You get those three joints for five bucks. Wrapped in the brown papers. <laughs> Next you know, it's giggle time on Makeout Lane. Which strain is this? I'm on a great big purple cloud and it's real purple. It's hey, you look real purple. You've got purple hair. Let's go dance. Let's go. Oh no! Oh, Ricky, look out! There's a car coming in here. Watch me give a shake. My baby, my baby. Oh no! Well, the morgue did a big business. Killed by Mary Three Lyons. lives. One girl never to walk again, if she lives. Oh, amputated. Too bad it wasn't the guy who sold those sticks. We'll get him, Mason. May take time. When we do, we'll throw the book at him. From all reports, this peddler isn't the ordinary run of the mill. He moves in all circles, from Beverly Hills and Bel Air to the nightclubs along the Strip, from Hollywood and the Wilshire District all the way down to Skid Row. I'm assigning you and Ty in this case. You're going to work as a team. Now, I want this deal handled strictly on the hush side. No pickups, no arrests. We can pull in the users anytime. We do it now, they may clam up. They talk, their supply is cut off. Our job is to find the main source of supply. Who sells it to the peddlers? How he rolls the stuff in and where he stores it. Looks like our vacation is over. It was so nice and quiet in the community, too. Somebody had to go get greedy and... Start a big push on the stuff again. But if we blow this deal, boys, all our vacations will be permanent. Well, better get some sleep. This may be our last chance. The boss was right. Sleep? That was for babies. I went home, dug out my old school books, loaded up my pockets with nickels for the jukebox, and brushed up on my jive talk. <laughs> then I played a solo in that malt shop. Another drink, man? Brushed up on my jive talk. Me? Yeah, you're fooling oh, all the kids. I joined the union to wear the uniform. <laughs> If the customers hadn't been loyal patrons, I, I think I would have put the owner out of business. I was all hands, about six. The only trouble was, five of them didn't function. Club St. Pierre. Hmm? St. Marky, can you let me have... Uh-uh, sweetheart. I crossed your name off my books. I'm not in business for love. Well, I can pay you next week. See me then. But Marky, I... No sense, no more action. See? Addicted to the Please, reefers. Please, She'll do anything for him. Hello, Hugo. Find any new talent lately? Big? You stay away from my girls. Hugo, you hurt my professional pride. You want him to have rhythm, don't you? Yeah, well, don't go soon. Back in a minute, honey. Hello, Marky. I'm awful jumpy today. Are you holding? That's jive talk, kids. Holding. I'm telling you, Marky, she's a nice kid. She's only working here because she needs a dough. Marky, did you hear what I asked? I've had my eye on that for a long time. Lay off, Marky. She's the kind that works to help support her brother, wants him to have a decent education. I... Rita, you sound as if I had the wrong ideas. I think education's a wonderful thing. I want to talk to her about it. I told you, she's a nice kid. So am I. I like nice kids. That's why I want to meet her. Arrange a party. Marky, I... Make it tonight. All right. You're a real sensible girl, Rita. The kind that knows how to keep a good friend. It's good to be the king. Tonight. Nothing sensational. How about coming over? Well, Bob's coming home from college. Summer vacation. He may be in tonight. We'll bring Makeup the party to you. We really never got me that many home. chicks. Yeah, but you didn't have the special rolled up three for five dollar brown <laughs> paper reefers. Good night, 
Are you kidding me? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> See, these are the reefers that were, that, you know, the weed now is five or six or ten or twenty times stronger than. And see that that weak weed was doing that. See, had me worried for a while. That's why it's so dangerous now. Spot out of things, don't you? I guess maybe I'm too busy trying to make a living. I help send my brother to college. Yeah, so I heard. What you need maybe is a little education yourself. Learn to relax. Let your hair down. You got a lot of class, charm. With a guy like me, you might even go places. I know a lot of people, the right kind. You might even call me a sort of Santa Claus. I could turn your life into a nice, big, beautiful sleigh ride. Enough dough to put your brother through college twice. You make living sound attractive. Oh, here, try one of mine. Go ahead, it won't hurt you. You're over 21. You got a mind of your own? I think you're the type that can take it or leave it. Hey, fellas! Anne's gonna join the club. Come on, we can't miss this. That's a good girl. Don't be a fool, Lord Anne. It's fun. You'll love us. Well, maybe one puff won't hurt me. Sure, you know I wouldn't steer you wrong. Oh, no, baby. Not like that. Here, try it. Show somebody else, stupid. Not her. Like this, honey. See? Now you try it. That's the way. One is like nothing beautiful. Try another. I've seen a couple of bands that actually used a theremin in their music. Big Daddy thinks it's one band called all gone. Right. Hello, chat room. Yeti. They were actually called Yeti, and the main dude from it actually used a theremin, like as his main instrument. You're so smart, Mike. So smart. Music. Somebody play some music. I want to dance. Yeah, I'll buy a ticket. <laughs> Alright, we have the opportunity to check in with our Google chat room. We have a video chat room. I see Grey Wolf and uh, is that Free the Weed and Jam Man Fan. I want to dance too. And Doug. Well, the the aptly good. named Doug That's Blunt. Nice dance. to see you. And Timmy Harris hanging out there. Hello. We Howdy, everybody. Enjoying the film? Says, they're all watching a movie. Oh, says. Fantastic. What's the name of that movie? Uh, this is She Should Have Said No she from 1949. No. There, comes, hey. there comes the theremin again, so you know something bad's going to happen. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Doug. Come on, wake up. Give me another stick, Marky. Give me another stick. Come on, who are you? <laughs> well, that's a bad luck. I own that, Marky. Come on, get up. Now get out. Now wait a minute, you. Wait a minute, you. I said get out. Yeah. Sure. My man's brother. Anything else you want to know? I'm sorry. What a night. Sis, 
Japan. No, Marky. No more. Makes my head spin. I'll let Rita have it. <laughs> sis. Wake up, sis. It's Bob. Bob. When did you get here? Oh, a little while ago. Well, why didn't you wake me up, silly? Well, I started to, but you were so sound asleep that I just didn't have the heart to. Oh, well, how about fixing me up some coffee, huh? Okay. Coffee coming up. Well, now that I'm awake, how about a kiss hello? Hi, sis. Sorry I couldn't get here in time for the party. Oh, it was not me. Tell me all about school, Bob. <laughs> you want one of your cigarettes? Help yourself. What's Sorry the matter? Sorry, around. Something wrong? Bob, you didn't quit school, did you? No. Yeah, but at least I'm not smoking pot. But it's something I've been wanting to talk about. But why, Bob? Aren't you happy there? Are you in trouble? No. No, it's nothing like that. Sure, I want to go on with college. I even had a couple of my paintings on exhibition this semester. But look, I know how hard you work, and I know what it costs to keep me going. What, with the payments on the house and everything? Look, you've done so much for me already, it, it just isn't fair to keep taking away from yourself and giving me. Sis, I'm going to get a job. Know the right people. With enough dough to put your brother through college twice. Put your brother through college twice. Know the right people. Listen to me, Bob. You're not giving up school. Not with your future. I never had a chance for one, but I'm seeing that you do. But the money. I, I can't let you do it. I've made up my mind. Everything will be taken care of. Ann, who is this mister? Who? I'll go unpack. But who's Marky, and who was it I found on the couch in the living room when Wait I... Wait a minute, kid. Slow down. You're throwing questions at me like I was on a quiz show. I'm sorry. It's just that I was upset coming in like that. Why don't you relax, Bob? So Anne had a little party. I was there with a few friends. We even hung around waiting for you to come home. Maybe it's just as well I didn't. You picked yourself up a cute little imagination since you were home last. Anne works hard trying to put you through college. Figures you deserve it. Maybe someday you'll make it up to her. I'm thinking about quitting college. She can't be making more than 60 or 75 dollars a week at the most. How can she do everything on that and live? Maybe I shouldn't tell you this because it's, well, sort of a surprise. But Ann did say something about a new act, a little specialty routine that's going into a club. It'll mean another 25 a week. Rita, who's Marky? A friend, kid. Just a friend. Stripes become you, Raymond. Must keep you from getting too lonesome for home. Your jokes are going to have you laughing yourself to death someday, friend. <laughs> we are watching She Should Have Said No we'll get you from up 1949. In the Let's call it ambition. You shove weeds to those high school kids. Wild marijuana party in car found Man, by you've police. you got to make a living these days, Jonathan. With me, a buck's a buck. Take you, for instance. A view overlooking the city, custom-made furniture, a different suit three times a day. You're a big man, Jonathan, a big man. I was thinking maybe I might be your neighbor one of these days. You just have to learn to crawl before you can walk, Marky. Like you did? Listen, Marky, you pull another deal like this last one and the narcotic boys will be barking on your tail like a pack of bloodhounds. That's my worry, not yours. When it comes to being in front of the gun, I am always there, not you. So I appreciate your loyalty. That's why I trust you, but it's things like this that make it very difficult for the margin man, like myself. Stuff it, roll the stuff in, prices go up. You're telling me that because of this caper in the news, it's gonna cost me more dough? Mm, let's say uh, $25 a can for each case of fresh, ripely picked tomatoes. Talk like it was a chain store. I take the major risks. And it's only honest that I share in the profits. Well, what can I do? You got me over a case of tomatoes. Hello? 
Oh, yes, Miller. When? I had nearly ten grand riding that shipment. Couldn't you do anything? All right, all right. Just keep out of sight. I'll contact you later. Trouble, maybe? Yeah. Miller was hijacked last night, coming in from Arizona. Some other outfit must have gotten wind of it. Are you sure Miller wasn't the wind? I hear tell he'll hold hands with anybody that'll drop over 50 cents in his palm, even the cops. I find out, I'll call you. Return the favor. Right. Take it out and trade at the old prices. Welcome, everybody, to our screening of She Should Have Said No from 1949. Raymond, I want you to pay Miller a little visit. Be real social. See, Bacon yes, Dan has joined us in the backstage. Body picked up in Santa Monica Bay, identified as Butch Miller. Miller's body in the bay for five days. He was murdered. Murdered, I say. The more she smokes reefer, the crazier life gets. Look, dancing, cavorting. It's all a haze now. We gotta find this uh, strain, don't you think? She starts hanging out with chorus girls. This is supposed to be that weak, you know, Woodstock. This is pre-Woodstock weed. This is not your great grandfather's Woodstock Woodstock weed. This is not your great grandfather's Hindenburg weed. <laughs> well, no, wait, 1949. Now yeah, it's post World War II, pre-Korea. I don't know what to call it. This is not your father's Eisenhower weed? No, too soon for Eisenhower. I don't know. Help me out here. <laughs> Her life's gone mad. I'm walking on air. See nothing to it. <laughs> oh, Is it Marky coming? He had a business meeting tonight. Male or female? Money. <laughs> Say, that's beautiful. Something I'd like to do my ballet to. My new concerto. Get in the mood and start from the beginning. I'm gonna die! I tell you, I'm gonna die! What's the matter with you? I'm gonna die. I know I'm gonna die. We're all gonna die. It's the funniest thing I ever heard in my life. <laughs> he thinks he's gonna die. That's a scream. <laughs> hey, before you leave this world, take a drag. It'll get you there faster. <laughs> Now I'm in the mood. I wish to be left alone. It's definitely not the strain of weed I take. <laughs> Sending the blonde away? No, no. That is a bad move.
a trip. Thank you. Thank you. Go, Aaron. Open. 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 I hope Hugo wasn't watching too closely. I was all feet. It's the longest rehearsal I've ever had. Another minute, not a drop. And how about a lift? Have you got it with you? I wish I had. But Mark, you'll have something. He'll be outside. Maybe I should tell you. Marky isn't the easiest man in the world to resist. I know what I'm doing. Before you two go, see me in my office. You uh, wanted to see us? We. Oui. For weeks now, you've both lumbered about like two elephants. The feet, they never left the floor. The bodies, statues, stones. The face, cream masks. Crank in your lifeless. So I shall be brief. You fire to go pick up your checks at the cashier. Why, you... Please do not excite me. Let's not waste time telling him <laughs> yeah, what he can do with me. his job. Come on. You go read it. I'll see you later. Hugo, I'd like to keep my job. No, I'm sorry, more, no. But I help support my brother. I send him to college. Brother, mother, mortgage, file, being caught. Always something is being supported. Always somebody is sending somebody someplace. But the answer is still no. I know this man, Marky. I see what he does to people. I feel very sorry for you. Save your sympathy for somebody who needs it. Hi. You're through early today. I'm through, period. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, just that I lost one of a girl's best friends. Her job. So now you got a new one. Friend or job? Both. Starting now. You're the boss, friend. Well. I need that stupid job. I'm a hot blonde. <laughs> what was I thinking? Like your new job, beautiful? You'd make a girl like anything, including you. Oh, yeah, she should have said now. Why don't you take care now. of the guests? All right. Professor? All right, you generous people. You are here to enjoy yourselves. And I am here to see that you do. For your pleasure tonight, we have a special offering. Some people call it madness. Others, the devil. But if it is the devil, he's helped to send my baby brother to college. Hasn't he, Marty? Collect the dough, sweetheart. Never mind the speeches. Two dollars a stick, ladies and gentlemen. Two dollars. Two dollars a stick. One for Marty. One for Annie's brother. Dig into your pocket for that big, beautiful, green stuff called money. Take it easy, Ann. The kid might walk in. Who's working the fingers to the phone? Annie, that's who. Who'll be the first to cut up a touch with me? I will. Is that the guy who was tripping out earlier? Bobby, where have uh -oh. you been? That's the Little boy shouldn't stay out so late. Bobby, you're rude. Now I know who Marky is. And what he is. And you too. Blow, kid. Go buy yourself a double malted. Come back tomorrow. A lead to help crack a case can be a funny thing. Sometimes it doesn't even take much to find. Just someone with enough courage to bring it out in the open. Homicide listened to Hugo's story, then transferred it over to Captain Hayes in the Narcotics Division. 
It was a simple story, but with tragic implications. A story like so many others from so many people, full of ifs. If only he hadn't been afraid. If only he'd turned Marky in. If only he'd listened to Anne and not fired her. If, if only Hugo could make a positive identification. You never know. When you least expect things to happen, they happen. From that minute on, Marky started living in a fishbowl. Lieutenants Mason and Tyne had a string on him 24 hours a day. They got up with him in the morning, followed him around like bloodhounds, and put him to bed at night. And sometimes, they even went visiting. The boys wound up doing plenty of homework on Marky, and it wasn't long before they started adding to their program. Subject, Ann Lester. And we've been living with a guy for a week now, Captain. He's a smart boy. Never oversteps himself, never anything out in the open. He's been sticking to the old timers ever since that high school episode. We can pick them up anytime. What about his source of income? No score for us yet, Captain. We, um, accidentally got into his apartment. That's strictly a mistake. The stuff he gets comes in cans. But unfortunately for us, he's torn off the label. Silly well, all we can do Who is just sit back and wait till he needs some new stuff. You know? Well, keep breathing on him. We've got two things in our favor, time and patience. This Ann Lester girl, Captain. The one whose brother was a suicide. Well, what about her? I've been checking with Alexander down at Homicide. There's a gimmick behind that deal somewhere. All through the coroner's inquest, she kept repeating, it's my fault, it's my fault. That's all I could get out of her. She's been on the habit heavy ever since, with Marky's help. You pick him up, if he passes, it may blow the works. You don't, Marky will have that girl turning cartwheels. She's young and attractive, Captain. You can't tell how much Marky's poured out his little old heart to her. All right, boys, put the bite on him. You got him, boss. Rita, come on. Relax, boys. I'll be with you in a minute. Relax, she says. I'm three years older since she went in to put on her hat. Friend, never rush a woman in anything. Took you all this time to put that on? I had a girl my feathers. Like it? It's a present from you. <laughs> You're welcome. Now the fashion show is over, where are we going? I thought we'd see Anne. She's having a rough time. Blames herself for what happened. She's pretty bitter. Can we console her and uh, cut up a touch, too? Maybe. Hello. It's Anne, Marky. Cut Boy, up a touch. Shakes bad. That's a new one. Lead is coming over. Can we cut but up a you touch? you I want to see. Hmm. Thanks, Marky. Get going. Turn right at the next intersection. What'd you do, get lost? Just keep your pants pressed under that wheel, bright boy. Look, friend, I'm a big boy now. I like to go riding with girls. I've got an appointment to keep. That's right. With Mr. Trainer. Well, in that case, how can I argue? Then my tire went flat and I lost them. If Tang can pick me up, we'll move in on a girl's house. They may have been headed that way. Okay, boss, we'll keep in touch with you. You come along just like a trained seal, Mr. Trainer. What happens, Jonathan? Do I wind up in Santa Monica Bay like Miller? You worried, Marky? Yeah. I never learned to swim. You won't have to. There's no water where you're going. Arizona. Denver. Nice <laughs> Good for now. So you should go to that because you could probably, because they hang out afterwards and meet people and, you know, you might be able to smoke them out. No, I obviously you can't, obviously you can't smoke Jay out because he's sober. I wouldn't say why he's not thinking about it. I've got other plans for the big sister. What do I do? Well, there's a little garage just beyond Ela Bend. When you get there, stop and have your tank filled with gas. You'll also have a slow leak in your spare tire. Have it changed. The serviceman will know what to do. That's pretty clever, Jonathan. And when you get back, call me. I'll, I'll have Raymond meet you. About that gas. 
Do I fill up with ethyl or regular? <laughs> no, no, Marky plays better than you do. Say, I wonder where Marky is. That's him. Who are you? Narcotic squad. I'll take that one, chum. Get back with the others. You're making a mistake. We just dropped in. You'll have a chance to explain it downtown. Where's Marky? I asked you where Marky is. I don't know anybody named Marky. Don't make it tough on yourself. Never heard of him. Why the cover-up? Like every room had a for rent sign. I guess Marky had more important places to go. What about the girl? Still cutting her baby teeth. Hasn't learned to talk yet. Okay, it's a nice sunny day. Let's all go get a little fresh air. Won't you sit down? Any law against standing? That's your privilege. Say nothing. This may take some time. I'm sure you will find that more comfortable, Miss Lester. What am I, under a microscope or something? You know you will be turned over to the police and charged with violation of the narcotics law. So my name will be in the papers, the courtroom will be crowded, and when I get out of jail, no one will care. Miss Lester, why did your brother kill himself? That part of my life is my business. Keep out of it. But your future life isn't, Miss Lester. That's ours. Whether we stay in it or not depends on you. Believe me, we're only trying to help. I don't need anybody's help. Don't believe I that for myself. a second. None of us is infallible. We all make mistakes. The secret is caring enough not to want to make another one. That means Marky. I told you before, I don't know anybody named Marky. We do, Miss Lester. Do you have any idea what sticking to a man like that will mean to you? The Markies in this world aren't very human, Miss Lester. They use people to get what they want out of life. And when the people are no longer useful to them, they walk away from them. By then it's too late. You're destroyed. Nothing like that will ever happen to me. That's an old story to us, Miss Lester. It happens without your even knowing it. They all start out the way you have. It seems fun. You get your kicks out of life. You forget your troubles. But the troubles are still there, so you try something else. Morphine. Opium, maybe. And there's Can't always there. a Marky around with a smile and a helping hand. Then he takes the stuff away from you because it costs money to get. But by that time, you can't stop. So you have to pay for it in many ways. I don't believe you. Here's a confidential file This girl was else. 23 when this picture was taken a year and a half ago. Would you like to meet her? Bring her in. Matron. Take another look. You wouldn't believe it was the same girl, would you? There's no hope for her anymore. <laughs> You're just trying to frighten me. No hope. Have the car brought around. Maybe I can change your mind. <laughs> Are they just keeping this girl <laughs> around to scare the rest of them? <laughs> no hope for her. Hello, Gladys. We keep her in a, what in do a you cell want, down the hall. Just want you to meet someone. <laughs> We've known Gladys a long time. Haven't we, Gladys? The feeling ain't mutual. Do me a favor, will you, Gladys? Show her your arm. What is this? A beauty contest? Come on, sweetheart. You should be used to it. Okay, boys. Take a good look. Enjoy yourselves. That's what happens when you take the needle. All right, let's go. <laughs> take the needle. Okay, note to self. Don't take the needle. This is <laughs> where Gladys lived. It's what happens when you get down to boots and shoes. When every penny goes to fill a needle or syringe. Here's where Gladys will eventually wind up. Take a look. You're safe. They're always safe on the outside of a psychopathic ward. Go on, take a look.
It's the end of the road, Miss Lester. I'll never you smoke reefers again. There is no other world. What the hell kind of jail is this place? This girl was lucky. She committed suicide. She too knew a Markey. Her name could have been Ann Lester. Could have, but it wasn't. Not much fun, was it, Miss Lester? You seem to think it was. <laughs> what you saw was your future. We want to save you and all the others from one like it. Help us and you help them. Very touching. We're after the man who supplies Marky. That's our only chance. If I ever get around to meeting him, I'll call you and introduce you. Too bad you didn't think of that two weeks ago. Your brother might be alive today. All well, right, what the a floor dick. show's over. What are we waiting for? Send the matron in. Take her away. She finds her brother hanging dead. <laughs> he keeps slapping her with it. Jeez. You're correct. Ann Lester, along with the others, pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 60 days in the Los Angeles County Jail. This was a new world. Strange, bewildering, a little frightening. The new look, exchanged for a drab one. A number instead of a name. A picture to mark her for future identification. Some hot girl on girl prison action. Oh, sorry, run. For the DVD. next 60 days, this was to be her home, her life, her future, or the end of it, with nothing to keep her company but four bare walls, a window, and cold steel bars. And Helga, her cellmate. Sixty days and every day the same. Up when darkness dies, to bed while it's still day. The same monotonous routine. The same thoughts, bitterness, remorse, the feeling she killed her brother, but too ashamed to admit it even to her own self. So Bob is dead, and you killed him. The only thing you ever really loved. You took and destroyed it. He was so young, and you never gave him a chance to live. He's dead, and you killed him. You killed him. Kid killer. You're a kid killer. You're a <laughs> what? Kid killer. Kid killer. Kid killer. Kid killer. Kid killer. Kid killer. Sixty days and sixty nights of the same thing eating its way into her heart and mind. Every face seeming to look at her the same way. Every voice accusing her of the same thing. Kid killer. 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 Kid became living nightmares. Kid killer. 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 Oh no! She's turned into a 
Star Trek time lapse. Yeah, this, this is all because of the jail, not because of the marijuana. <laughs> maybe, maybe we ought not to lock her in a cage by herself for 60 days. This doesn't seem to be helping her any. The mind can only stand so much conflict and turmoil within itself. Anne Lester was no different than anyone else. Transferred to the county jail hospital, she was given a chance to rest and receive proper treatment. Oh. Then other things began to disturb her. Kid killer. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> we passed that. You sure nobody's been here to see me? Nobody. And I've seen lots of girls like yourself come and go. First, it's 60 days. Then it's six months in and six months out. If you add it up, it becomes half a lifetime. Oh. The monkeys in this world aren't very human, Miss Lester. They use people to get what they want out of life. A guy like me you might even go places. I know a lot of people. The right kind. And when the people are no longer able to serve their purpose, the Marquis walk out on them. You might even call me a sort of Santa Claus. I could turn your life a nice, big, beautiful sleigh ride. By that time, it's too late. You're destroyed. This should be a big day for you, Anne. What's so big about it? That after 50 days in the snake pit, you finally open the doors? Well, now that you're out, what are you going to do? Me? I'm going to the beauty shop and try to look my age again. Then I'm going to take a bath. Think the smell of this place will ever come off of me? Welcome home, beautiful. Hello, Margie. You must have been a good girl getting those 10 days off. How else can a girl act in a snake pit like that? We have a lot to talk over. 50 whole days. And nights. It is a real noble thing you did, not talking. I appreciate it. And a friend I do business with appreciates it, too. I didn't do it for him, for you, for nobody else but little me. I've got lots of life to make up for. The only thing I'm interested in from now on is money. You learned a lot in 50 days. That isn't all I learned. I may even be able to get my hands on some of that money. Big money, Marky. No, they do. Let you out at night to roam the streets? No. I decided to become real domestic. Stayed home every night. Meet lots of people. The profitable kind. Well, it's very interesting. What's the pitch on this? Skip it. I'll work the angle myself. Compared to this deal, you're fooling with nickels and dimes. There's a certain party here from the East, fronting for a big syndicate. At the moment, they're looking to tie into some of that stuff. But I don't think that's the real purpose. I think they're planning to open a branch office. That's a big mouthful. I got it from the mouth the words were put into. The gentleman's girlfriend. She became my roommate. I don't think my man in the front office is going to like that. He may not have anything to say about it. Maybe we should arrange an introduction. I said forget it. Simmer down, little girl. We're partners, remember? You could arrange for me to meet this party. Then I might convince him to do business with Trainer. From the way my roommate spoke, her friend was trained to take, not ask. You introduce me. We might all get in on the taking. I'll call him. She's got the influence. I don't usually talk business at this late hour, but who am I to turn a deaf ear to an honest deal? Uh, since you are my guest, Mr. Gabriel, wouldn't you be more comfortable without your hat? I like it with my hat on. Keeps the draft out of my head. What's the proposition, Mr. Gabriel? Please, Marky. How do I know I can trust you two? Her, I know. She took a rap with a couple of acquaintances of mine. The dolls I know don't give the nod unless it's on the level. I wouldn't have suggested coming here unless I knew the trick could be turned, Mr. Gabriel. Okay, sister, you say so. But you blow the deal, Mr. Romero won't like it. Romero? You heard the name right. We got no secrets. Everything open and above board, right on top of the table. Backed by cash on the line. The delivery of merchandise. Seventy-five grand. The cash isn't hot, Mr. Trainer. We keep it in a deep freeze. You can take it to any bank. I apologize for my thoughts, Mr. Gabriel. 
That's all right, I understand. When you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Now, what about the stuff? I, uh, excuse me. Hello? Yes? Uh-huh. Well, this rather upsets me. Are you absolutely sure? All right. Forgive me. My butler and right-hand man, Raymond, he's been down taking a little inventory at the warehouse. I was hoping to supply you without any delay, but now it seems I don't have that much stuff on hand at the moment. Give me 12 to 18 hours and I'll deliver. What do you say, Marky? Maybe sooner. Where do I pick up? Oh, I'll call you. We'll go together. I'll be waiting. See you around, baby. This deal works out, the boss may give you a nice present. Make it a mink coat. You roll the stuff in, this will be in your pocket tomorrow. I want to see you, alone. Wait out in the hall, beautiful. Some things are private. You don't mind. Just as long as they pay off. Smoking a few reefers, 60 days. Now she's like a high-level dealer. High-level high trafficker. She's the Tony Montana of weed. Tomorrow night this time we'll be celebrating. What's my cut? We split five grand. It's gonna be lonesome driving all the way wherever you're going alone. <laughs> you make it tough for a man to stay honest. Who's more important, trainer or me? Who brought in the deal? And who's your partner? Mark, you should do a little more thinking about yourself. What's happened to your ambition? The things the trainer has and you want. What are you driving at? Your ambition. In my lack of conscience, we may get a few connections. Where are we going? Arizona. I think I've been underestimating your talents. Hello, Raymond. It's getting a bit chilly waiting around for you. You should have dropped dead from pneumonia. Yeah, now I remember. It was in Chicago about five years ago. I was on homicide. I picked you up just when you were about to give Big Sam a bath. A tub of concrete. I don't forget you, Mason. Please, Raymond. The name is Gabriel. Mr. Gabriel. You know, your boss and I have just made a deal. I'm about to take over his warehouse. Since I'm a stranger in town, maybe you better show the way. And just when I was leaving, these jerks drove in with two truckloads of canned tomatoes. But the real ones. Yeah, I'll be here all night unpacking and counting this stuff. Okay, trainer. Nicely done, Raymond. You missed your vocation. You should have been an actor. But then they do put on plays where you're going, don't they? Shall we start? Backstabber. Look how they spell out the license plate. Limited bandwidth uh, communications medium. Maybe we can use the digits that come with this thing. Just a thought. Nice cozy little place you got here. I'd say it has its good points. Raymond. Raymond. Boss will never forgive me anything goes wrong with this setup. We all have to take our chances, Mr. Gabriel. What fun would there be in winning if we didn't? I thought I told you to leave her out of this. You're thinking for too many people, Jonathan. Whatever she's in, I'm in. We're partners on this deal. Settle your problems on your own time. I'm here for business. Hello? Yes? Go ahead, please. Hello? Yes, this is Trainer. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate your calling. That was Mr. Romero, Mr. Gabriel. Only he doesn't know any Mr. Gabriel. What is this? Why don't you ask her? It was she that dreamed up Gabriel. That wasn't a very nice thing to do. Anne, for all your help. I don't think we'll have to worry about filling in this blank space with another picture of you. No, Captain. But it's you I have to thank. Well, and she Lieutenant was the snitch. It hasn't only been my fight alone, but everybody's. The whole truth about marijuana! It's high time the public up. Young and old alike know the whole truth, the full truth about marijuana. Ignorance is a sin, knowledge is power. Only boys and girls who are fully informed can be expected to resist the marquees of today and tomorrow. Best authorities estimate the world has over 200 million domatics today. Boys and girls, men and women who are victims of their own ignorance. Government narcotics experts reveal over 75% of new marijuana smokers are teen agers. Tomorrow's list could include your youngster. No one seeing this film could be easily tempted to so wreck their mind and body, but millions won't see it. To enlighten them is your job. Cooperate fully with government authorities in stamping on ignorance. Make your nation a better place in which to live and raise a family. I couldn't agree more. Yes, that is from 1949. <laughs> That, sorry about that. 1949's She Should Have Said No. That's all the time we got here on the new Viper Hour. We'll do another movie next week. We'll be putting on The Devil's Sleep. So tune in for that. And tune in tomorrow at 3 o'clock for another episode of The Russ Belleville Show. The latest news, interviews, and information for the cannabis community. We're getting ready for 420. I hope you are as well. Tune in to our live coverage from Denver, Colorado. We'll go on live Saturday noon mountain time uh, at 420radio.org. Audio and video at whatever level we can get it. So we'll see you then. And until next time, take care of each other, tokers.